talk to you today about what is cheating. Now, of course, like you, I've been a student, went through my grammar school and high school and college and graduate school, and now I teach at Portland State University. And I'd like to talk to you about what is cheating. First, I'd like to ask you, what is the purpose of an education? I think that if that's clear to us what the purpose of an education is, then we'll know what cheating is and what cheating is not. Now, what's the purpose of an education? To me, it's to develop a skill. The student should develop a skill and have the knowledge to live a good life and to serve others. The purpose of an education is for you to differentiate yourself that you could become an artisan, you could become great at something so you could live a wonderful and fruitful life. That's the purpose of an education. So let's look at cheating to see how cheating affects or interferes with the purpose of your education. Now, I'd like to look at copying first. Is copying wrong? Is co I mean, you're taking a test at school, right? And instead of drawing from your own memory, your own experience, you're copying somebody else's paper. Now that's obviously wrong. I mean, you'd get in a lot of trouble in school if you were caught cheating. But let's stop for a minute. The Japanese, after World War II, were living in poverty. And they wanted to very quickly reconstruct their society so they could live a very good life in the world. So what they did is they came to America. They were notorious for copying. They would come over here with their cameras and we would graciously let them visit our plants, our manufacturing sites, and they would come in with their cameras and take pictures. And we weren't too smart at the time because we had no future perspective, no future understanding of what might occur from them coming in and taking pictures. In fact, I like to tell the story about this uh, Japanese uh, businessman who came over and said to the plant manager, I want to take your picture. And of course, the plant manager was very happy to have his picture taken. And he was standing in front of a machine and the Japanese said, could you move over just a little bit? And of course, he didn't want your picture. He wanted the picture of the machine. So is copying, is copying wrong? Well, for the Japanese, it wasn't wrong because they learned from the copying and became very successful. Now, maybe copying us and those people that went out of business, it was wrong for us. But I just want you to think about that. If I'm copying a painting and selling it as an original, to me, that's wrong. Do you know? I had a student last year, and this student, uh, I asked the students, to read my Harada book, the Harada Method book, and to write a book report. And he submitted this paper to me, and I'm reading it, and it occurred to me, you know, I've read this before. Well, for some reason, I keep all of my students' book reports. And I went through them very quickly, and I found the exact one. This student had copied a paper from a friend 100%. He even copied all the mistakes. So, what do I do? Maybe an average teacher would throw him out of school because he copied. Well, it didn't make me very happy that he copied. And of course, he got a very poor grade. He even got a poor grade in the course. I didn't feel him, fail him, but he didn't get a very good grade. But now in retrospect, what should I have really done? I should have said to the student, really, get in front of the whole class and tell us what you learned from the book. And if he learned nothing, then he wouldn't get a good grade at all. But if he was able to articulate fully an understanding of about the Harada method, then I shouldn't have penalized him for copying the paper. That's the way I feel. But let's go on. In the ninth grade, uh, my worst grade, my worst year in life was the ninth grade. It was the last year of junior high school. And I remember I was taking history. And I loved history. And I'd go home and I'd read the assignment, come to class the next day, take a test, and I couldn't remember anything. 
and I got a very poor grade in history because I do not have a good memory at all. I don't. I still don't have a good memory at my age today. But when I look back, because of my problem, I was talking to a friend, Gary, in the same class. And Gary said, Norman, I have the same problem of, of you. I don't have a good memory. I go home and do the homework, and I come in the next day, and I can't remember. But he said, you know what I do now, Norman, is I take a small sheet of paper, take a small sheet of paper, and I write down all of the key points from the homework assignment, and I take the sheet of paper, and I put it in my pocket. Then when I take the test, if it occurred to me that I read this, the answer to this question, I look at the sheet of paper and see if it's there, and then I write it down. Well, that sounded like a very good idea to me, a very good idea. So I went home, and I read the assignment, and I wrote down on the sheet of paper all of the key points that I thought were important about the homework assignment. And I go to class the next day, I put the sheet of paper into my shirt pocket, and sure enough, the first question, I know the answer, but it's not popping out of my memory. So I take the sheet of paper, and I look at it, and then I look up, and who do you think is there? The teacher. And the teacher looked at me, how? She looked at me as if I was the worst kind of criminal. Norman is a cheater. She told every other teacher Norman cheated in class, and my name was Mud. It was no longer Norman. My name was Mud. What a miserable year that I had. But now, in retrospect, if I go back and look at what is the purpose of an education? The purpose of an education is for me to develop my skill, improve my knowledge, so that I can be successful in life and serve others at the same time. What that teacher should have done at that moment is she should have looked at my sheet of paper and she should have seen, did Norman copy down the key ideas from the homework? And if I did, she should have given me an A not an F. She should have rewarded me for really learning. Now, I'm not sure yet, you know, if that learning will pop out in my life, but I believe it'll do. I believe even with a poor memory, you know, when you need certain information, it just comes out of your brain when you need it. So, I want you to stop cheating yourself. I want you to focus on developing yourself. And how do you do it? For you to try to figure out the best way how to develop yourself. How do you develop your skills and your capabilities? How do you become a real artisan? How do you become really great in life that when you get up and go to work, you really love what you do? Now what's cheating? I mean, if you go to work every day and the job is boring and it's repetitive and you don't like it, boy, you're being cheated and you should do something about it. I think the way that you can do this is, number one, find a very strong goal. What you really think that you're capable of doing. What can you do that you'd really believe in yourself that you could accomplish that task? Sit down and don't listen to this mind. You tell it, you want to come up with a real goal, and you get it to work, so you come up with a really wonderful goal that's going to differentiate you, and you're going to love to develop this particular skill to be successful in life and serve others. Be the best at something. And thank you for listening. You might like to um, go see some of the Harada Method videos at the Leadership Institute. Thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you liked it.